A forehand clear is one of the most basic shots in badminton, but we see so many people struggle to get a good power and good timing, and just generally using the wrong technique. So in today's video, we're going to teach you everything you need to know about the forehand clear step by step. So let's get straight into it. The first part of your technique that you need to get right is your preparation. You should be in a loose forehand grip with this V shape here and a little space in between your index finger and middle finger. And we're already at our first and perhaps most common mistake. You shouldn't be in a panhandle grip. A lot of people, especially beginners, use a panhandle grip because it's easier to hit the shuttle. But using this grip limits your ability to rotate properly through the shot, which reduces your power and control. Yeah, and playing like this is what a lot of people think badminton is, but we want to get rid of that image. You should also have your hand further down the grip to create a longer lever, which again enhances your power. The next phase of your preparation is your footwork to actually get to the shuttle. So from pretty much wherever you are on the court, you should split step, chasse, and then ideally be slightly behind the shuttle. Being behind the shuttle isn't necessary, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So on your forehand side, the most common footwork movements are either a scissor kick movement or a jump out, and which you do depends on the position you're in. And on the round the head side, you'd most often do a scissor kick. The basic technique of the clear is very similar whichever footwork pattern you use. And so are the final stages of the preparation, which Greg will quickly take you through now. Yes, yeah, so in the final stages of your movement, you want to be facing sidewards with your racket arm having roughly two 90 degree angles and your non-racket arm up to help you with your timing, balance and rotation. The clear, like a smash, is a shot that requires power as you need to make sure it goes right to the back. And if you're really tucked up like this, then you won't be able to generate enough power. And speaking of the smash, it's ideal to have the same preparation as both your smash and drop shot. And if you've not seen our step-by-step -step tutorials on both of these shots, then we'll include them in the description below. Okay, so you're in the right position. Now let's move on to the hitting action. As the shuttle is approaching you, you want to start rotating your body. And like we've mentioned in previous videos, there's actually a specific order you should rotate your major muscle groups to maximize your power and also help your recovery back into core as your body weight is then moving forwards. So from your starting position here, you generate energy in your legs, then rotate your hips, then torso, and then shoulders. As you're rotating your torso, you should keep your elbow back and delay the forward movement of your racket arm. This stretches your chest out meaning that your final movement that pulls the elbow forwards is more powerful and your elbow and therefore racket comes through faster as a result. And it's really important to be relaxed in this movement because if you're really tense like this, then your elbow won't come forward first, which means you won't be able to generate any speed in your racket head and your clear won't have any power. After your elbow comes through, you then bring your wrist through to rotate the forearm and hit the shuttle. And this action is actually quite similar to how you'd throw a tennis ball. You just want to focus on the acceleration into the throw with your elbow coming forwards. Now, like the smash, the optimal contact point is to strike the shuttle around half a meter in front of you. But because you're playing a clear, which is often used when you're not in a good position, you're likely to be off balance and taking the shuttle in line with you or even behind you. And if you're watching this thinking, my clears never reach the back when I'm in trouble, well, this is likely to be because you're not creating enough power with your arm and shoulder, especially your elbow and back of the shoulder to whip the shuttle like this. And this is important because you can't always rely on the forwards rotation of your body to help you generate power. But no matter if you're striking the shuttle here or here, you don't want to have your arm too straight or too bent. And these are actually two common mistakes we often see. If you have your arm too straight, then you're only using your shoulder to generate power, not your forearm and wrist. And if you have it too bent, then you're limiting your rotation, which reduces your power. So having a slightly bent arm is optimal, but definitely not so you can feel it lock out. Finally, as you strike the shuttle, you need to really squeeze the grip, as this will also help improve your power. Now, before we show you a few different ways to practice a clear, there are actually three different types of clear that you need to know. 
First, and most importantly, is a normal clear. And for this, you use the technique that we've just been through. You should use this type of clear in situations where you need to reset the rally or to simply move your opponent, especially in singles and women's doubles, to help you create opportunities and gaps on the court. It's important to mention that you don't want to hit your clear too flat so that your opponent can easily intercept it, but you also don't want to hit it too high as this gives them a lot of time to play their shot. But if you are in a lot of trouble, then you should hit your clear with height. And this is our second type of clear. This is used when you need to give yourself and your partner, if you're playing doubles, time to recover. And for this high clear, you need to bend your wrist back more to hit underneath the shuttle and create more height on your shot. The third and final type is the punch clear. <laughs> this is an aggressive shot and can be used to win the point outright or force your opponents to take the shuttle late in the rear court. The technique for this is slightly different to the normal or high clear, and it's quite an advanced shot. So if you want us to go through this in a separate video, then let us know in the comments below. So now you know how to play the clear, the next step is to practice it. And the more you practice with purpose, the more permanently precise your clears will be. That was a lot of peas. <laughs> so if you're very new to this, we'd recommend throwing a tennis ball to practice your technique, as we mentioned earlier. You can then swap this for a racket to help get the feeling of the racket head acceleration and grip squeeze, but still whilst not using a shuttle. The next progression is to get someone to high serve up to you and you try to implement the preparation and hitting action that we've been through in this video. We'd recommend starting by facing sidewards and then progressing to add in some more movement when you feel comfortable and ready. And remember to practice from both your forehand and round the head side. Our third progression is an open routine where you're moving from slightly different positions and you're under varying amounts of pressure when you're playing your clears. One example is to start with a high serve and then you can follow the pattern of clear, clear, drop, push and lift. By adding in a drop shot, you can try to make sure that your preparation is exactly the same as your clear. Here, it's really important to remember the basic technical points about the grip, rotation and acceleration of the racket, whilst also trying to make sure you get good length and height on your clears. You especially need to hit your clears with good height in our last practice, where you have to move to the service line after every clear. This is a great practice to put you under pressure and make you move fast. It therefore really highlights the need to hit high quality shots that give you time to recover. Those practices are all great because they only need half a court. But of course, it is important to practice cross court clears too. So when hitting cross court off a stray shot, your racket face needs to end up in the direction you want the shuttle to travel. And when hitting straight clears from a cross court shot, you might want to hit slightly across the shuttle to make the shuttle go straight. That's it for this step-by-step -step clear tutorial. If you found it useful and want to watch another one of our tutorials, then click here for our drop shot tutorial or here for our smash tutorial. And of course, we'd really appreciate you giving the video a like, smashing the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll hopefully see you on another video very soon. Bye.